The 21st century heralds in a new age of space exploration, the commercial space age. Private companies like Elon Musk's SpaceX are working on innovative new rocket designs with an emphasis on reusability. These new rockets have already brought costs down dramatically, and future iterations of the technology promise to improve capability and reduce costs even further. So let's compare current rocket technology to the rocket that took us to the moon 50 years ago. For simplicity, all costs will be inflation adjusted to today's dollars. One launch of the Saturn V could send 49 tons of payload to the moon for $25,000 per kilogram. To the moon simply means the payload will arrive at the moon, but it won't necessarily be graceful. Landing softly on the moon requires additional propulsion to slow down, as well as landing gear. But for simplicity, we'll ignore factors involved with the soft landing. Today's analog to the Saturn V is the Space Launch System, nicknamed SLS, which has been under development by NASA since 2011. Once operational, it'll be used to send astronauts back to the moon as part of the Artemis missions. Similar to the Saturn V, the most powerful variant of the SLS will be capable of sending 43 tons to the moon at a cost of $20,000 per kilogram, which is a 20% reduction in cost compared to the Saturn V. Although originally planned to launch in 2016, the SLS has been delayed at least six years so far and has seen excessive cost overruns. We need to do better if cost-effective access to space is the goal. But don't worry, commercial launch providers have the solution. On a cost per kilogram to the moon basis, some say the SLS will be obsolete on arrival. Since SpaceX is currently operational and partially reusable Falcon Heavy is already capable of sending payloads to the moon for only $10,000 per kilogram. This means that for the same cost, the Falcon Heavy can send two times more payload to the moon than the SLS. Supporters of the SLS point to its larger payload capacity and fairing volume as justification for the extra expense, since it will be able to transport large items in one piece. But SpaceX is currently developing a much larger rocket named Starship that will have 3.5 times the payload capacity of the SLS and aims to be fully and rapidly reusable. Full reusability means the whole rocket can be returned to Earth for reuse, and SpaceX's hope for rapid reusability is to have the rocket land, refuel, and be ready for relaunch in the same day. Conservative estimates for the cost of a Starship launch are only $100 million, with Elon Musk believing costs can eventually be brought down 50 times lower to only $2 million per launch. At this price, cargo could be sent to Mars for less than $200 per kilogram. But this is Elon we're talking about, so take that with a grain of salt. However, even with the $100 million price tag, and assuming a few extra launches per mission to refuel in low Earth orbit, Starship would be capable of sending 150 tons of cargo to the moon for only $2,000 per kilogram. In other words, compared to the SLS, Starship could send more than three times as much to the moon for one-tenth of the cost per kilogram, with room to reduce costs by another factor of 10 if a high rate of reusability is achieved. At these costs, unlike 50 years ago, lunar tourism and other activities actually begin to make economic sense, which has led to a resurgence of interest in returning to the moon. So, with all these advancements in rocket technology, are we finally ready to send humans to Mars? For thousands of years, we only dreamed of the stars, but the moon landing proved us capable of traveling among them. Inspired, the Apollo generation hoped to see humans go to Mars and beyond in their lifetime. But the governments of the time failed to rise to the occasion. Today, we see private companies leading the charge, so we no longer have to rely on a political justification for investment in space. And, thanks to commercial launch providers, access to space is less than half as expensive as it was in the 70s, with the potential for Starship to drop costs another 10 to 100 times lower than that. These low costs have given rise to a new space race, with various manned missions to Mars already on the drawing board. But getting to Mars is quite different from getting to the Moon. There will be technological challenges and health concerns entirely different from what was experienced during the Apollo missions. So can current technology get humans to Mars? And how much would it cost? Would humans even be able to survive the journey? And what does humanity have to gain from such an endeavor? You'll find answers to all these questions and more in my upcoming videos. So if you made it this far, consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, stay curious about Mars Matters.